My name's uh, Louise and I'm, I'll be 42 next month and I was um, diagnosed in 2007. <laughs> um, I'm currently working four days a week as a clinical psychologist. I work in community health <laughs> at Menor in uh, the Sutherland Shire and I work with 0 to 18 year olds. Two weeks after I moved in here, mm -hmm. um, I came home one night. I was learning Middle Eastern drumming. And I came home one night and in the shower, I noticed that my right index finger wouldn't straighten out. And I thought, oh, you know, maybe I've done something in drumming or a bit of um, RSI or carpal tunnel. And I didn't think anything of it. And that was in about... Uh, September 2006. Mm -hmm. Now I noticed um, I was having cramps in that hand and I'd be holding onto the steering wheel and all of a sudden my hand would cramp up and I couldn't let go. And then that passed and I thought, oh, you know, again made me a bit of um, a cramp or a nerve thing. Mm -hmm. And then I was having trouble with um, toe drop or what I later realised was um toe drop on my right foot. I um, tripped and fell a couple of times at work. It was like my legs didn't have the right strength to push through. So it was like I put my leg down it would feel uh, not weak but a little bit like it wasn't right. So I started talking to um, a doctor. I was going to the chiropractor at the same time. And then in about oh, June 2007, I realised that um, I was having trouble with my left index finger. So the chiropractor suggests I go and see a neurologist. Mm. So I did that, um, had a chat with him, then went for an MRI, and in the meantime did the fatal thing of googling my symptoms. So I went, oh crap. Mm. And they went, no, that was silly. So then I went and had the MRI done and about 10 days before I was due to go on holidays to Mongolia, I, um, I got that diagnosis and yeah, that was kind. Of, and that, it's only when I think about that moment that I get a bit mm -hmm. choked up mm -hmm. and um, I remember coming home and Mum being on the phone and saying things like, you know, oh, we're all devastated. And I remember being on the lounge going, no, we're not. And I was like, I refuse to be devastated. Mm -hmm. We came up and I went into um, Prince of Wales mm -hmm. for some further testing and a second opinion. Mm -hmm. So it was about a month later um, that I got the confirmation of a motor new one. And that was, well, six years ago. My arms are the most badly affected. Um, I can't do the chicken dance anymore. So, <laughs> so Maybe I, that's a relief. Yeah, not a bad thing. So I, I can't get my arms up to do that. Yeah. Um, if I work with gravity, so I can lean over and pick something up, off the ground with your hands yeah if you're working with much them. easier than I can lift my arms up yeah mm -hmm. um and the interesting thing is my finger where I first noticed the problem I can still use it so I can still operate a mouse with that finger I can use both my arms and both my hands mm -hmm. not brilliantly well I am um, can no longer write mm -hmm. I'm not allowed to drive, and I was um, probably driving for longer than I should have been. Mm -hmm. um, my legs aren't as badly affected. I still have a lot of uh, strength mm -hmm. in my legs, but my feet, I have a uh, toe drop. Mm -hmm. So I use a walker when I'm inside, and when I'm outside going to work and I'm in the office, I use a motorised wheelchair. Mm -hmm. Um, my speech obviously isn't as badly affected, 
and my breathing and swallowing are generally pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, I found out from one of the speeches that my problem is with breath control. So it's only when I'm talking that I often have to stop and take a breath. Mm. Um, at work I find that I need to choose my words carefully because I know that some words will be okay mm -hmm. and others will um, take a bit more effort. Mm -hmm. some, some days I can be slurring, some days I can be quite nasally yeah. and then um, halfway through a sentence my um, voice will clear. The only things I have a slight problem with eating or swallowing would be something like fresh bread. Yeah. Where it gets a bit gummy. Mm. Um, mm. Or if I have meat that's a bit dry. Mm -hmm. and initially, the biggest challenge was mm. accepting and asking for help. Yeah. yeah. Because what was a big task in my mind was something that might take someone else five, ten minutes sitting back and not doing anything. So that was hard. I initially thought, oh, I know, when it comes time that I have to have someone come in and shower me, mm. that will be it. I'll go and live with mum and dad. And then that time came and I kind of thought, eh, maybe not. <laughs> so I'm, um, I've adapted to a lot more things that I thought mm. I would. Mm. Do you live on your own? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah but, um, I have wonderful support from my neighbours. Mm. Ella comes in every morning on the weekend, gets me breakfast, makes sandwiches. Mm. Um, Tony, my friend who is here, comes around every Monday. Mm. Um, my neighbour Jim drives me and my wheelchair to the railway station, picks me up in the evening. So how do you feel at the end of the day? <laughs> Ah, oh, tired but not wrecked. Mm. Mm. Um, I mean, I'm up at half past five mm. Mm. and there are days where I think, why am I doing this? Mm. I have every reason in the world to yeah. not work. Yeah. But if I didn't work, I think I would go mad. Mm. So I had become a lot better at accepting help. Mm. Mm. Probably the biggest challenge is losing your independence around decision making. And not uh, decision making when it comes to um, oh, should I buy this or mm. buy that or um, do I need help with this but around things that are about how you present to the world and interacting with the world mm. um, for example if I'm in a manual wheelchair you feel like you're at the mercy of the other person where they want to park him in the wheelchair and what direction they want to face you in. Not because they don't care, but because they're upright and behind you. Mm -hmm. You know, so I might come up to an elevator and mum will stop at her distance. Mm -hmm. But that means that I'm too close. Mm -hmm. And then you have to keep correcting and then you feel like you're whining. Yeah. Um, and that's... That's mm. a real challenge, mm. having to kind of um, commentate those things. Yeah, those or, little things all the yeah. time. Yeah, or how you have your hair done. Mm. It's very hard to say to someone, see that little bit of hair mm. on the left-hand side of me mm. at the front, mm. can you move that? And you have to develop a completely new vocabulary for saying to someone, Okay, on my right hand shoulder, can you grab that top and pull it in? People involved. Yeah, on a Monday I have um, a woman who comes in who does a cleaning and a shower. Yeah. And then she comes again on Wednesday night and Friday night for a shower. Okay, yeah. So yeah. that gradually builds up from once a week to mm. twice a week and mm. I am... Um, Decided on Friday night earlier this year because Sunday morning I used to have a shower on my own but I couldn't get my t shirt back on. Mm. I think I've um, developed a different understanding of some of my clients. I know I get why they get angry or upset when they can't communicate 
or when someone doesn't get what they they are saying or feeling. I get now I I mean I I've always got intellectually mm. but now emotionally mm. I gotta know what it feels like to have a tantrum. Um and to just want to heal. I agree. Mm. And to realise that and that's okay. And I've also realised that a lot of what I tell my clients isn't tried. It actually does help. Mm. You know, mm. you might say something like, well, you need to focus on what you can do and focus on the positive. And then I would often think, does that really help? Mm. Mm. But now I know that it does. Mm. Mm. I mean, there were times... And you can give examples. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Mm. I um, remember seeing a little boy with... CP, and he would tell me about, you know, oh, I had a dream that I could run. I went, oh no. You know, and he was able to look at me and kind of go, yeah, you do get that. Yeah. So mm. I think clients get that I get what's going on. Yeah. And so that's probably been a really big thing. But I suppose the other big thing is, um, you learn what defines you and what doesn't. So I'm not defined by whether I can dance or walk or, or run. But I'm more defined by how I deal with the world. Mm. And I um, realise that I am as tough as I always hoped I would be. <laughs>